In this video, I want to have a look at logarithms with GP. So when we're looking at problems involving geometric series, when have we've come across problems that ask us to find the number of time periods or the number of terms in our sequence or series, we've always had to do use trial and error to figure that out before. But now that we've learnt logarithms, we can use those instead. So don't forget as well that we do have our change of base law on your formula sheet, which can help you to rearrange these equations. So let's have a look at an example. Our first one asks us to find the smallest integer value, so the smallest whole number, so that 2 to the power of n is greater than 500. So we need to find which whole number we can put in there for n to get an answer bigger than 500. So I'm going to show you three different ways of solving this. Our first way of solving it is just trial and error. So you're going to pick numbers to plug into n and see what your answers are. So for example, if we pick 2 to the power of 8, that's going to give us 256, which is too small. If we try 2 to the power of 9, that's going to give us 512, which is bigger than what we wanted. So because 8 was too small and our next whole number 9 gave us an answer that was over 500, we're going to have, therefore, n equals 9 is the smallest integer that gives us, that, sorry, that satisfies this inequality. Okay, so that's our first method, trial and error. But you can imagine with more complex problems that that's not going to be the easiest or the fastest way to find our solution. So let's have a look at a second method. So for this method, we're going to write 2 to the n equals 500, and we're going to solve this, which will probably give us a decimal, and then we can use that answer to figure out the next integer up. So if we have this equation, we can write, rewrite this into um, log form. So we would have log to the base 2 of 500 equals n. But we can't solve log to the base 2, so we're going to use this change of base law to rewrite this. So we're going to have n equals log, let's just do log to the base 10 of 500 over log to the base 10 of 2. And now you can pop this in your calculator and you'll get 8. 0.96, so on, so it keeps going, which means, therefore, oops, wrong button, um, therefore, n equals 9 is the smallest integer value, so we have to go up to the next number. So, nine, sorry, 8.96, um, and the number keeps going, that will give us exactly 500, but we want the, the next number along because we want it to be greater than 500. Right, so that's one way of using logs. The third way we can use it also uses logs, but in a slightly different way. So we'll start off again with 2n equals 500. And this time, instead of rewriting it, we're actually just going to take the log of both sides. So if we do log of 2 to the power of n equals log of 500. Now using our log laws, that n, that power that can be brought down the front. So we've got um, n times log 2 equals log 500. And remember, when we're writing log, we do just mean log to base 10. And then to get the n on its own, we can write log 500 over log 2. And this now is exactly what we had over here. So that's going to give us our 8.96 and so on to give us, therefore, n equals 9 for our answer. So all of these are perfectly valid ways of answering this question. So you can use whichever way makes most sense to you. Our second example is a bit more in-depth. So it says Jill started a small stationary business and she made a profit of $20,000 in the first year. Every year since, her profits have increased by 12%. So our first question asks us during which year did her profits exceed $50,000? And then it says during which year did her total profits since starting the business exceed $300,000? So for part A, we're just talking about one particular year. So in that one year, we want her profits to be over $50,000. Whereas in part B, we're talking about her cumulative profit over all of the years since she first started the business. So this is going to be a GP. Our A, our first term, would be our 20,000. And our R, because it's increasing by 12%, that means that each term is going to have to be multiplied by 1.12, so to find 112% of that first amount. So we're increasing it by 12% each time. Right, so let's have a look at A. So we know that the nth term of a geometric series is given by A times R to the n minus 1. So we want the nth term to be $50,000, or actually we want it to be the first year where it's over $50,000. So 
So we're going to use $50,000 here equals 20,000 times 1.12 to the n minus 1. So now we need to solve this to figure out what n is. So I'm going to divide both sides by 20,000 first. So that's going to give me um, 50,000 divided by 20,000 would give me 2.5, 2 and half equals 1.12 to the n minus 1. Now this is where you can do either of those methods that we did on that first example. So I'm going to um, take the log of both sides. So we're going to have log of 2.5 and I'm going to bring the power down the front as we do this. So n minus 1 times log to the 1.12. So this would have been the power and I've just brought it down the front. I've just done that in one step. So that means that n minus 1, I'm going to divide by this. So I have n minus 1 equals um, log of 2.5 over log of 1.12. So to get n on its own, I'm going to have that whole thing. Log of 2.5 over log 1.12 plus 1. And that's going to give me 9.08 and so on. So that means it's going, her profits are going to exceed 50,000 in the 10th year. So therefore, in the 10th year. So in the ninth year, she hadn't quite made 50,000, it would have been close, but in the 10th year she did. And we can double check that as well by substituting 10 into, um, sorry, 10 into here, and then checking that our answer does come out to give us something over $50,000. Right, so that's part A. Part B, instead of looking at uh, a particular term, we're looking at the sum now. So uh, sum to n terms, going to be a outside of r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. I just realized that I actually meant for this question not to be 300,000 but be 100,000. So let's just change that and go from there. So now we can substitute in all our numbers into this formula. So we're going to have our 100,000 equals 20,000 outside of um, 1.12 to the n minus 1 over 1.12 minus 1. Um, this would work with the 300,000 as well, but um, it would have ended up giving us the same answer as this, and I wanted to do something different. Okay, so we need to rearrange all this to get n on its own. Now this 1.12 minus 1, that'll just simplify down to, um, to 0.12. Then to get rid of that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.12. So that would end up giving me 12,000 equals 20,000 outside of 1.12 to the n minus 1. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 20,000 and I'll end up with 0 0.6 equals 1.12 to the n minus 1. Then if I add 1 to both sides, and I'm just going to flip it over as well. So adding 1 to both sides, I'll end up with 1.12 to the n equals 1.6. And then we need to rearrange it like we've been doing over here. So that's going to give me n times log of 1.12 equals log of 1.6. Then I can divide. So n equals log of 1.6 over log of 1.12. And that's going to give us 4.14 dot dot dot. So that means, therefore, her total summative profits um, are first going to exceed $100,000 in the fifth year. All right, so that's having a look at how we can use logarithms to help us solve geometric series problems.